Hi, I'm Severio from Honet Plugins. Today I want to show you our latest plugin, the Holnet Multifrex. Multifrex is a spectrum analyzer that can work both in analog and digital mode. Analog means that instead of the classic graphic visualization of the spectrum, you have uh, 31 different bands, each with a, a single dot, uh, for uh, a certain division of lead. It can be 6, 3, or 2, 1 lead, dBs for lead. Uh, and so you have lead bars that show you the level of each of the bands. This is taken directly from uh, an hardware spectrum analyzer that is still in use in many professional studios today. Uh, of course, you can uh, use the traditional digital uh, spectrum analyzer with, uh, with a graph and uh, uh, the peak hold uh, and we also added average and so on but I'm gonna show you uh, how the plugin works so uh, you can uh, have a, a better understanding of uh, how uh, to use it so I have a, a, a drum loop here drum session and uh, we want to understand if we can improve the mixing and clarity and uh, so we are going to use uh, uh, multifrax because of uh, its ability to show in the same view uh, spectrum from different tracks. To do that, we have to put the spectrum analyzer on every track we want to analyze. So uh, first, we will add it uh, to our kick. Okay, so it automatically has taken the name straight from the track. This works uh, in VST3 and AAX, so all in Pro Tools and uh, all the other VST3 host, uh, because the other formats does not support this kind of information. But of course, if you want, uh, you can change the color that is chosen randomly when you add the plugin to the track. I think this is uh, right, this is fine, so I won't change it. And of course, you can rename the track if you want, but I won't do that because it's the same name of the track, so uh, it's very easy for me to, to, to keep uh, the, this, this name here. Then you have the range that you can choose. It's uh, uh, the, um, the range of the, of the levels shown by each of the bands or the lowest uh, uh, level here in the digital um, spectrum analyzer. And then you have the integration time. It's uh, the time it takes uh, to each of the band to reach its maximum and uh, get down uh, to its minimum. And this, of course, uh, the faster uh, you set it, the more um, fine you have a view of the peaks. And the slowest uh, you set it, uh, the more average you see uh, on the graph. So I will start stick to one second, that is the default because it's a good compromise. It's uh, 500 milliseconds uh, of rest time and 500 milliseconds of full time. Then you can choose to see the mid or mono side of part of the, of the track. If it's a mono track, it's just the track as it is. While if it's a stereo track, it's the sum of both left and right channel or the side that only works on stereo tracks and uh, shows the difference between left and side, left and right part of the of your track. This is useful to see if you have a um, strange sound going on on one channel that is not on the other and uh, gives you an overall clear idea of the, how the, the track sounds and uh, the frequencies are distributed. Then you have the peak hold button, the average that shows the RMS level of each of the bands or in digital an RMS level of each frequency. Then you have the button to reset the peaks and average. And then you have the new conflict mode that only shows the part of the spectrum that is shared between the tracks you have chosen to view here. Uh, you will see that once we start adding uh, instances uh, of the plugin, uh, this area here, here will start being populated with the name of the other tracks and you will be able, clicking on that, to uh, enable that for the view. And so uh, with this mode, you only see the part of the spectrum that is shared between the chosen tracks. 
And uh, so there's not, this is of course a load and save uh, button for the presets. And uh, I will start adding the plugins to the tracks so you will see how it works in, uh, in action. You see a snare is appear here next to our kick. Then we will add it to the hi-hat. Next to the overheads. Next to our room and we are done. So I will switch it back to uh, the kick because uh, I want to see kick and snare and uh, the, 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 the instances that you have open on the track here is always visible. So if uh, I could, for example, have been using uh, uh, the overheads one, but I choosing kick and snare, but I would have seen overheads, kick and snare, and I want to see snare and kick together, so I will choose either kick or snare. So just for uh, stick of it be easy, being easy, I will choose the kick and I enable the snare. And once I press play, you will see both track being displayed here. You see, this area here is clearing overlapping and you also see the different peak where uh, the sound lies, but I won't use the peak indication right now since uh, uh, it's not useful for me in this application. There is some kind when uh, kick and uh, when the tail of the kick and the snare are together, there is some kind of overlapping here clearly shown. If I put it digital, it's even easier to see that because uh, this part are colored differently. This is the overlapping part. And if I want to be even more precise, I could enable the conflict mode and only the overlapping frequencies are shown. And I see, I think we have an issue over here because uh, it reaches higher level, negative uh, negative 37 dBs, so it's, it's something to be considered. The other parts here are so low that it's not, that not going to be a problem, but this peak down here at 160, or 160, 160 around that may be problematic. So we have been, uh, we have uh, easily highlighted this uh, part here. And now I want to understand if it's come from the snare or the kick, I think the snare. Yeah, it's mainly in the snare, but it's the body of the snare. So I don't want to remove too much of that. I think I will leave this frequency in the snare and I will equalize our kick to remove all this low shelf we've given here and maybe add a little cut around that frequency. So let's say here. See if it's better. Yeah, definitely. Now, it, when the kick hits, you have lower level than here, but we can even do better removing even more that frequency, maybe with a larger Q. Okay, Let's see now. Perfect, perfect. We have improved the clarity of the, um, the sound of the interaction between kick and snare, and uh, we can done the same using uh, our overheads and room that usually are the parts that are more busy. So if I enable the room here, see how much the spectrum is shared. If I enable the conflict mode, we still have this issue around here. So we can remove that from the, 
from the uh, room track because I want to keep the snare focused on that region so I will choose the same uh, 160 here and drastically remove that with a larger cue because we are in the room track so you are not you are in the background let's say perfect improved, much improved if you look at that you see that the overlapping part is minimal right now and is where it has to be so with uh, this plugin uh, we can uh, easily improve our clarity in the mix so this was uh, the Hornet Multifrax and is available right now for on www.hornetplugins.com. We don't have a demo for this plugin, but uh, uh, we offer a 100% money back guarantee within 15 days of your purchase. So uh, if you like the plugin, just buy it and then you can ask for your money back if uh, you don't want to use it anymore within 15 days. So thank you very much for watching this video.